Hi, I'm Linda Korsha. I've been looking at international trade agreements for quite a few years, working to inform the public about what's dangerous in them and working to oppose them. Trade agreements are not being mentioned in, by the parties in the election, really, and certainly not the dangers of trade agreements. Um, there's two important aspects that receive uh, very little attention in this country and not well defined, and that's the UK's own unilateral liberalisation and, and also labour issues are not mentioned very much. The UK has been completely liberalised since Thatcher's time and that means that we have been completely open, uh, all investment opportunities here have been completely open to transnational investors, um, whether it's uh, private sector, like firms being sold off, it's always open to transnational investors and the result of that is that we don't own anything anymore in this country because it's been in that direction for a long time and it also applies when there are privatizations in the public sector those investment opportunities are also open to transnational investors so this uh, complete liberalization is to suit the needs of the city of london because uh, the uh, the transnational financial services there we have to be the global model for liberalisation because that's what they want globally. So that's what drives UK policy. There's little attention paid to workers and to labour as an aspect of the economy, really. And if you notice, there's less and less reporting on workers as the, the, the shift in reporting has gone towards business perspectives and business needs. Uh, Tom Mills in his book on um, the BBC really points this out, how there's, um, there are no industrial reporters anymore. It's all business focus. Um, but work is really central to our lives. It's, it's central to how we spend our time, much of our lives in time. It's also central to our survival. And labour is also the, the fundamental part of the economy. The left pays insufficient attention to this, but the right, as in big business, certainly knows the importance of driving down labour standards. And obviously this happens through two, two main mechanisms, is to shift work overseas to cheaper labour areas or to bring in or move across borders workers who will work more cheaply and that's uh, inherently undermines labour standards as well. Both of these are reinforced in trade agreements and facilitated in international trade agreements. So what we're looking at going forward with uh, UK trade agreements, the UK will be in the trade agreements that the EU is hurriedly pushing forward at this stage for quite a few years. We will we'll be tied into those for quite a few years. Um, and then we're looking at the Brexit deals that are being suggested or pursued. So obviously a main priority for the UK government is a trade agreement with the US. And the person who has been and probably will continue to be in charge as Secretary of State for International Trade is Liam Fox, who's very closely aligned uh, with, with US big business. In fact, has been an organisation that has been a bridge for a major US uh, lobbying organisation. So um, very, very tied to the US corporations and um, obviously the UK is very keen to push ahead with a deal with the US. We can look at what went on with the tra trade and investment partnership with the EU that has been negotiated for a few years but is at a standstill now. And we can see there that the, the biggest force was US agribusiness pushing to get their lower standard food into the EU. And you can see that the UK is quite, a, as always, a, quite a GM-friendly uh, government 
and that the, the UK can be the, the opening for that for US agribusiness pushing into the UK and as a doorway to the rest of Europe. We need to be really watchful about what's being proposed for trade agreements and not accept this magic word that trade agreements are the one thing we need. It's the content of trade agreements that really matters. And we need to know that from the earliest stages and we need the assessment of who's going to benefit and who's going to lose from such trade agreements. A good source of information about trade agreements generally, um, but in the EU context, is Corporate Europe Observatory, CEO. They've looked at a lot of aspects of the uh, agreements that have been negotiated at the EU level. What we need in the UK is the same sort of strong uh, network for information sharing that has been in place uh, across the EU uh, to fight the, the EU trade agreements. Now we need that sort of network here, sharing on, on with a focus on trade agreements.